It's getting a little warmer. 60 degrees for our highs. So that winter chill is not here anymore. That's great. I like it. We get more stuff done. Well, today we're going to do an off-build configuration because the only way you can buy this is to buy the official kit for the bead machine and because it's got two uh, vertical slides or horizontal slides the two long slides and you need two of these spacer blocks to slide that out and then it's just a bunch of crazy stuff so I myself just went and bought the bits and the uh, polishing tools and I'm going to use the uh, setup which is the uh, horizontal milling machine build and put in the bits and do it with the uh, do it with that build with the bits so uh, one thing that I've learned because I've uh, done this off camera to make sure that I'm doing this right. Let me sit down here and do this. Is you've got to have your blank pretty much well to size. It's got to be the depth of the bead. So the diameter of the bead would be the depth of the bead. So it's got to be right about there or else you've got to drill down make the beads smaller and all that so you want to get your stock close to the size as possible but also you want your stock to work so it's wide enough that you're not drilling into your bikes now on this it would be nice that if you could you know, drill bead here, drill bead here, drill bead here, and just use the uh, horizontal slide to move it over. But, unfortunately, let me spin this out here, take this out. You've got these areas that you would drill into, hit into, because of the long tip on the bit. So it's got to be in the center every time. So you just want to center it up and forget it. You'll have to slide your blank across to make it work. So put your blank in there and move your vise to the center. You love to center the vise bolt up to the center of the machine head there. So now you ordered the, uh, or you should, or it's a cheaper way, ordered the kit instead of the whole machine so you've got all the other machine builds and the kit comes like this first thing is your uh, cutter bit with your cutter tip this tip slides right into there evenly then slides up into here evenly and then this collar comes down all your allen heads backed out enough all four of them to slide down here and hold that in place and pinch it down and torque down each allen head and tight so it doesn't vibrate out and go flying while it's spinning around because it went loose. Even though you got safety glasses you don't want your tongue sticking out while you're trying to do an intricate cut and have your allen head fly off and smack you right in the tongue. Do it right I have to wear a face shield. So then this right here, this tip threads out, flips around, and threads in, and this is where your collet can grab a hold of it. So you 
get your right size collet, slides right in there. And your collet lock, collet. Bring this up enough so we can work on it. Once you get it in, tighten her down. Line it up. Tighten that connecting piece down nice. And didn't mention this earlier, but we are going to build it and do it all in the same video. So we built it. Next we'll do it. Stay here, I'll be right back. All right, thanks for being patient. My Crohn's is killing me. Really, literally. All right, so you want to... Want to have this all centered. So if you have a straight edge, nice little flat piece to help you align and center these perfectly. Then you'll be better off. Here. Why don't you come a little closer and check this out. What do you think? Can you see there? So, I've got that so it stays inside the work area and it stays inside the work area. I'm going to loosen up the, well, lift this up, loosen up the clamp and bring it over. So we start at the beginning line of this a bit. Tighten the clamp up. Have this so it is just sitting on that. Give it a start. It is spinning perfectly. Bring it on down. Slow down here. Or just about to touch down.
see in there it's not exactly all the way around you want it because of the, where the blade is you want that end to push down on it all the way down, all the way down even dig in just a bit And then clean the tool off, get a square. I started to do it. You can't slide the table over. It's got to be right in the middle because this long spike goes way down into there. So there's a first cut on the first bead and we want to move this over. So we align the bit and we bring this edge over and I too low, bring it up. Too low, still. Now I bring it so that because there's that empty space, that cut edge right there, I overlap them so that cuts into that cut edge of the other one. As you can see over here. bring it back so it's just going to be a little into that other one I just wanted a little too much I've done it a lot of times too much and it cuts into the other bead making a flat spot on the other bead so you have it tighten it down I'll leave you here for this cut got your safety glasses on It's a little dark. I should have told you to bring your flashlight. Sorry about that. All right, roll this out. I'm gonna stand back over here. I'm gonna quickly cut a few more, and then we'll flip it over to the other side. Right there, it looks like I cut into the other bead. So we will uh, flip it over and do it on the other side. We were working like this. So if we just flipped it over like this, our hole in alignment would be off. So we want to flip it over like this to lay it right. So our alignment and the holes will be correct. I believe. Yep. So, on doing this, I find and I take the hole and I put the piece into the hole and I lift it up some out of the vise, holding it square and flush, and then tightening the uh, vise down. So we don't have to drill all the way through. We don't need to. We've already made the hole. We just need to get to the cutting edge. And here we go.
Now you will be able to feel when you're turning it that it's getting tight, tight, and then it loosens up, and then you have completely cut the bead away. So there's one bead cut. You pop that off. Here we go. One cut bead. Move on to the next one. So I line it up, lift it up, clamp it down, spin it down. Now sometimes your beads will fall through and fall down the bottom of the vise. They won't slip out the back, which would be nice if they did. Then you could just cut them. It slips out the back, roll out of the way, move on to the next one, do it more machine-like. You could build up some washers and spacers on this vise, but I think then your vice wouldn't be stiff and strong. You would have to try that yourself. See if you'll like it. There's another bead. I've tried to slow down, cut slower, cut with less pressure and all that to try to get rid of this little seam there. I haven't been able to get rid of it. That seam seems to be that it's always going to be there. All right. Uh, bear with me for a second. I'm going to cut out these other two and then we will get to polishing. All right, here's two lessons on trying to conserve stock product, making your things short. As you notice, it has cut into the side of these. Fortunately, that's when I had it lifted up. If you're going to be cheap and try to get as much out of it you can, you're going to start cutting into your vise. And, like I did with these two guys, you cut into your beads by trying to squeeze it in there. You can see that little moon shape. Cut into your bead there. Just because you're trying to save a few inches. That's not a good idea. Alright, on to polishing this. We take the uh, cutting bit out and we put in the polishing holder tip. In the book it shows them doing it on like a horizontal lathe build style. I guess it's easier to see or whatever, it doesn't block the light with having that motor up there, but it works just fine right here just like this. Take it out, uh, you uh, shove your bead up on this post. Nice and tight so it holds it still. Grab your polishing tool and you hold it against that. And you spin this at the same time that that spins. The next step is to remove the seam or the center line that was left over from cutting the two edges. To do this you put it on the honing post and to make it easy I'm using a small hobby file to remove that line.
finishing it off with the honing stone.